Hey guys, this is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is fun. Coming at you today with a quick tip. We're going to learn how to loop through all of the option buttons that may occur on a sheet or on a user form. So if you have a lot of options, let's say some of them are uh, checked, uh, one in the middle maybe, and you don't want to actually have to call them by name. Let's learn a dynamic way to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the Developer tab, and I'm going to click on the Insert button. I'm going to select the ActiveX Control Option button, not the Form Control Option button, because that's not as good. We're going to go to the ActiveX Control Option button, click here. I'm going to Control click and drag, Control click and drag, and they're not exactly aligned. We're going to show you how to do some alignment tricks later, but not on the sheet. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to take it out of Design Mode. And I'm just going to select on one of these. I'm not going to worry about recaptioning them or even relabeling them. We're going to focus on the code for right now. And we'll talk about alignment and stuff in the user form a little bit more. So, all right. So we have this particular one. Now, they're all called option button one in the caption. But the actual name, if you look, is option button one, two, and they're automatically named option button three. So what we're going to do in our code, and we're going to go ahead and hit Alt F11 and go into the Visual Basic Editor. So here we are. This is the workbook called Loop Through All Option Buttons, etc. So we're going to create a module to handle our code. There we go. And we're just going to type sub. I'm going to call this test. You might want to call this one. Actually, let's give it a decent name. This is going to be called Clear Option Buttons. I'm going to call it Clear OBs because my fingers are tongue-tied right now. Clear Option Buttons, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the object browser. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the immediate window, the watch window. Don't get scared. There's actually some really cool tools that we'll touch on. So what we need to do, we know we need to do a for loop. We need to say for each something or for x equals 1 to something or other. But how do we go about that? Well, what I've discovered is that whereas in a user form it's a lot easier because everything is within the user form dot controls. Well, on a worksheet it's a little bit different. We had to do some uh, some searching here. So we know we're going to have to do for each uh, item, for each something rather, in. And what's the collection is the big problem. So, so what we had to do is we know it's in sheet one. That's the object that contains all of those things. But we had, a, uh, once I did a dot here, I went searching for where is this option button. There is a collection called option buttons, but that didn't work. It said there was nothing in there, even though whenever I click away, it does capitalize the O and the B. So there's something there, but it was not what we needed. Ultimately, what we found out is, oddly enough, it's not sheet1.controls. It's sheet1.ole objects. That's what contains the ActiveX controls in your worksheet. It's like option button 1, 2, and 3. We're not going to name them by name. We're going to do it dynamically, a loop through all of those items in the sheet one collection called OLE objects. And of course, if you're doing a for and next loop, you need to say next, and I'll even explicitly say the same variable name item. Okay, so now we're going to hit tab just so it'll look pretty. And so here's our loop from, from here to here is our loop. So each item in sheet one.ole objects. Now, uh, if we go ahead and, and start uh, stepping through our code, I'm going to hit F8. So if I hit F8 now, uh, we really aren't telling it what to do with each of those items. But at least we're in uh, the debug mode, which is called break mode. So if I hit Control G, it'll open up my immediate window. You can get there using the view immediate window. But I'm going to hit Control G to just to open that up really quickly. Now, what I wanted to know is how do I determine? Can I just say uh, item dot value equals true or equals false. So here's what I did. Item dot value equals false. Okay. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to get an error. I think that's what I did the first time around. So we started the loop. Item has some kind of value uh, or, or has some kind of substance. We didn't get an error there. So if I hit F8, it says, hey, this does not support the property of the va dot value property. So that's kind of interesting. So what I did is I went to the uh, watch window. Okay. So the watch window right here, if I double click on ITM and just drag it over there, I can now expand that object which is already instantiated and we can kind of see what's going on here. Now I'm not going to bore you with exactly what I went through, but I did find that you had to hit up the, the dot object in order to access the value feature. So value down here currently is false, so the first option button is false, it's not checked. So we just had to do item dot object dot value that's what we found using the watch window and now we can use that and now it's false 
and now the now we're in the second one which is right here you can see if I hit F8 that one just became false and finally the third one became false and that's the only ones now if you didn't have only option buttons perhaps you had regular buttons and you had checkboxes all kinds of stuff but you only wanted to clear the option buttons we need to specify with an if-then statement so let's start our loop over you notice I dragged my little uh, yellow arrow there now we, we're gonna go ahead and we're in the watch window we're gonna expand this so I'm trying to teach you how to do a little research on your own as well. So we expand the ITM. Now, uh, what I could do in the immediate window is I could say that what is the uh, let's see question mark? What is the type name for ITM? So what is that thing? ITM. It's not a control. Sure enough, it's OLE object. So, um, but we need to do something. We need to say if ITM dot something equals option button or equals something like that. And the only thing I really found is this program ID, okay? Because the name could is subject to change. You might name it something that doesn't say the words option button, so you can't depend on that. But the program ID does not change. So I'm going to right-click copy and just kind of paste it in my immediate window. Uh, that way I can copy this program ID. So what that, all that to say, I'm going to say if itm.prog ID, program ID, equals this string of text right here, Oops. Then, and I need a little bit more space. Watch window. You need to go away. Watch window. So if the items program ID equals forms dot option button dot one, and all of your option buttons on the sheet will have that exact ID forever, always, then, and only then would that particular option button be cleared. So let's see if that works. If I hit F8, yes, this one is an option button. So the value is false. This one is, this one is, and if there was a button, it would say this one is not. So that way, it wouldn't try to make a button equal to false, which it cannot. All right, let's quickly move on to the user form. We've already spent a lot of time on that, but I am trying to show you the steps to learn this stuff as well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add a user, oops, I'm going to add a user form. I added a module. Here's a user form. Really quick, we're going to click on the option button control. I'm going to hold my control click key with my left pinky and click and drag click and drag that's how you can copy it really quick I'm gonna align them by selecting them all alt O A L that was alt O for format a for align L for left okay and that's good enough so here's a lot a lot easier to do on a user form we're gonna add a very simple not flashy looking button not even gonna recaption it but I'm going to go ahead and double click on the button because that's where we're gonna trigger it so uh, actually, let's go back to the user form really quick. Just make one of them equal to true for the value. So the value is currently false. And uh, notice I cannot double click on that to toggle it because there's not just one or two options. There's actually a third option, which is null or a, um, a tri state uh, value. But let's just change it to true. So hit enter. The value is equal to true. Now we can double click on the button and do something cool. So whenever the button is clicked, here's what we're going to do. This is so much easier because, like I said, you can use the me.controls or the userform1.controls. So for each, uh, we could use ITM again. You could use CTL, whatever whatever floats your boat. In for each control in me.controls. Hit enter. Next, CTL. Hit up. Hit tab. And we're ready to rock. Now, this is a lot easier because I happen to know that in order to control the the value it's just ctl dot value equals false you don't have to do dot object dot value it already knows that this is an object so really you could just do ctl equals false and that is the the value is the default property so it's fine the other thing that you might want to do is again um if we do the let's go ahead and hit hit f8 go ahead and click the button we're still in break mode because we opened the user form using f8 it's a little trick so once we have CTL instantiated or initialized, we can go ahead and double click over here, bring it over to the watch window. Now we don't have to because if you go to the immediate window and use the question mark type name, what's the type name of CTL, the current control? Well, the type name for the current one is an option button. Now there is a button, a command button, so not all of them would be that. But very simply, we could say if type name of CTL is equal to the word option button. This is case sensitive. Okay, so make sure you capitalize what needs to be. Then 
end if. Okay, so if the type name of that particular control, the current one, is an option button, then we're going to make it false. Remember, we're just trying to make the option buttons equal to false and clear them all out. We're not trying to do that to the checkboxes or list boxes or clear anything else, okay? So, yes, there's one. Actually, let's uh, scoot to the user form over here so we can see. Zoop and zoop okay now we can watch the magic happen so here's the second one it is an option button and you can watch it visibly become false and this one is an option button so we're going to make it false but the next one type name is command button i happen to know that's this button right here because it's looping through all the controls in the entire thing all right, this workbook will be available for free download, so if you just click on the link in the video description, please give this video a like and subscribe if this was helpful at all to you, and uh, please be sure and check, up, check out ExcelVBAIsFun.com. We've got uh, courses and all kinds of really good uh, information, uh, free and premium stuff as well. So we'd love to see you there as well. Thanks for watching, and God bless.